because the Irish Memory Orchestra plays without sheet music on stage, um, it opens an access for, for blind and vision impaired musicians that uh, most orchestras don't have. Gradually I got the idea, this is great that we can include blind and vision impaired musicians and um, so I kind of got the idea of doing a project um, where we would integrate some blind and vision impaired musicians with the memory orchestra and I'd compose a symphony for that. We had worked with Dave for a number of years ago. We had commissioned the Kirk and Churcho um, by him, which was performed by the Irish Memory Orchestra to huge acclaim and travelled internationally. So it was always in the back of our minds to find some way or some opportunity to work with Dave again. And serendipitously then we had contact from 3L and they were looking to develop something for blind musicians. So orchestra, when they come in, in the E major section, no, 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 not there. The first time. Okay, the very first time they come in, what we've just rehearsed twice, just take it down a bit so you can hear them. That, so we, we, we've developed this relationship with Claire and Claire Arts Office over many years, and a lot of our music is rooted in ideas from Claire, and we've some great Claire musicians in the orchestra as well. So it was just a natural fit to, when I had this idea to discuss it with Claire Arts Office. We have a very strong arts and disability programme in Clare County Council and have done for a number of years, worked with um, quite a large amount of artists and organisations throughout the council in the arts and disability sphere. So really it got us thinking that, well, what if we could marry Dave's talent as a composer with the technology that's on offer now? And obviously there's so many um, amazing musicians in Clare, some of them who have disabilities, to try and include them as well. So that was really the genesis of the idea. Um, kind of feel it was meant to be somehow. <laughs> identified that we would need to bring on board groups like Arts and Disability Ireland in terms of um, upskilling ourselves and identifying the needs of um, disabled participants um, and uh, also the National Council for the Blind were going to be very important in terms of actually accessing people visual impairments um, and from there then we made an approach um, to the Arts Council for research and development funding through their invitation to, to collaborate scheme and this is a wonderful scheme that's available to local authorities whereby local authorities are encouraged to work in partnerships with other organisations to do projects that would have a certain amount of ambition I suppose and maybe um, that are a little bit outside the box in terms of what people think maybe local authorities are doing. Let's do that again, choir, that was fantastic. We'll do that again so that you can hear it. Council funded us to um, commission Dave to create a symphony and um, to commission Brian to create the technology and the website. We were very lucky to have um, an extraordinary artist and musician and singer in her own right, Chiara Conway, who's our Arts and Disability Coordinator. And Chiara really was the person who managed to get everybody around the table and um, get them talking and sort of share this joint vision for the project.
the Arts Council, really, this project was probably one of the most ambitious and collaborative projects that we've ever supported and funded for a range of reasons. Uh, it was developmental in its approach. It was international in its perspective, but it also involved many different partners. And that, for us, in terms of our work with local authorities, is really important. So it was the Irish Memory Orchestra. It was Arts and Disability Ireland, um, as well as um, the, the, the Council for the Blind. So it was the collaborative nature of it that was really interesting from our perspective but actually it was the ambition of it it was how innovative it was and how it really wanted to create new ground and break new ground in terms of its approach to working with people and the integration of people through the highest quality of artistic output um, and that's what we've got Applause. <laughs> Very good. There were new challenges because the blind or vision impaired musicians uh, can't see the conductor is the is the main challenge and, and the conductor Bjorn Plantock usually gives a lot of visual cues um, which helps orchestra members when they've memorized everything the visual cues are quite important so they know oh yeah this is the bit that I've memorized that I come in here um, so that was a new challenge to figure out how we can get cues to the blind musicians, particularly the blind musicians. Um, some of the vision impaired musicians can see Bjorn or they can see outlines of shapes, but still there's challenges there. Um, it's, it's not always as clear in certain lighting, um, all his cues. So I kind of conceived the piece using some mu uh, musical cues. So in the Vision Symphony, um, I play the triangle a lot and that's often it's a cue but I try to make it as something that actually works as a piece in the piece of music and um, the triangle gives cues in a certain rhythm and, and there's also timpani rolls so the singers know when a certain timpani roll begins that they're to stand up to the visionary's choir and then another timpani roll starts and they know okay we're going to sing now. During the research phase, we got to meet the musicians. There was Frank Kelly and his family, about four. There was Rebecca, Emily and John. And we met uh, Dr. Donald Fitzpatrick, who lectures in computing at DCU. When we got the go-ahead for the main project, I went to NCBI and I met with Stuart Lawler. He recommended a web design company called Interaxis. Interaxis gave me pointers on the website, how to develop it, what to do, what colors to use. After that, Dave Flynn from the Irish Memory Orchestra started to send me a musical score from the actual symphony. At the same time, he sent the musical score to some of the members of the orchestra who would act as mentors for the visually impaired musicians. I kept close contact with Dave and the mentors at the start through email, and then we would arrange to meet them individually as I had to record each instrument playing the full score and then break this down into smaller usable parts for the musicians. I can go the side. to welcome a delegation from the Chinese Embassy. Through the online digital platform that 3L set up, 
we have a Chinese flautist who's living in Sweden who was able to learn the music and join with the orchestra, which really, I think, shows the ambition and international reach of what we have done. So there's four movements, and um, it's not as descriptive as the Clara Symphony. It's, it's just like a piece of uh, a symphony of music, but it's a shared vision of cooperation. It's about, um, it's really about, there's no barriers to music. There should be no barriers to music. And so that's why we removed the sheet music to allow so many different musicians to play a symphony. <laughs> After the concert there was some really touching kind of comments from some of the blind and vision impaired musicians like one member of the choir who's um, completely blind he said he was sitting there listening when he wasn't singing and he, he could picture everything which I thought was amazing and really interesting I'm wondering how he was picturing things but I could see like they were quite moved because none of them had ever had a chance to play with an orchestra before and um, um, I think it was almost overwhelming for some of some of them. People didn't know what to expect, and um, it's fair to say not only were they pleasantly surprised, I think they were actually blown away by what they saw on stage. For many of them, they didn't realise or weren't able to identify who were the visually impaired musicians, which was very important to us because we saw them being there as musicians in their own right. The whole notion of a disability was lost. It was really about their abilities as musicians on the stage. And the wonderful thing about the technology, it's there now so that there's artists from all over the world, musicians from all over the world who can learn the symphony um, and they can learn the pieces in the symphony and uh, that's a wonderful legacy that Clare County Council was able to offer.